Quiet Dialogue Between a Muslim and a Non-Muslim, Part 13. Question 38, Non-Muslim, Why is it necessary to believe in the Prophet of Islam Muhammad, peace be upon him, and believe in his call and mission? Answer 38, Muslim, this is because I have clarified in my answers to the previous questions the clarification of what is contained in the Holy Quran, which attests to his sincerity and sanctity because the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the one to whom the Holy Quran was revealed. It shows us the sincerity of his call and the credibility of his message. Also, I have illustrated examples of the clear and explicit news from Christianity, Judaism and Hinduism books that indicate the coming of the last Prophet Muhammad. Now I will summarize to you other examples of the pieces of evidence and proofs of the prophethood and the message of the Prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon him. For instance, the pure belief and the clean call that the Prophet of Islam, Muhammad, brought which is accepted by pure instinct, good souls, and rational minds which I had mentioned earlier. His good morals and his generous qualities, including the sweetness of his talk, his speech, the beauty of his condition, the perfection of his nature, gracefulness, and his honorable lineage. He came from the most honorable Arab lineage to be evidence of God choosing him for the prophethood and message. His austerity, peace be upon him, and his reluctance from the adornment of the world and its pleasures and his focusing on the worship of one God. He called to the ways of goodness, virtue, morals, keeping good relations with one's kith and kin and his heart continuous remembrance of Allah. His mercy, peace be upon him, with people and his compassionate with all the creatures of Allah and his blessing on all who cling to him for any reason. The support of God for him in response to his prayers, so that this can be evidence of the sincerity of his message, peace be upon him. Allah supports him with miracles and paranormals that no one can bring them except the prophets of Allah and his messengers to be a witness to the sincerity of his call and the credibility of his message including the great miracle, which Allah promised to keep to this day and to the last hour. It is the seal of all heavenly books. The Holy Quran preserves its divine text and enlightenments challenging, people, by its elegance, the splendor of its meaning, the accuracy of its sorts, its structure, its lofty objectives and its goals for the Arabs and others everywhere and every time. It defied them to bring even one chapter, consists of one line, like it, but they could not and failed. Also, the Holy Quran has contained amazing scientific facts for more than 1,400 years. The modern science has confirmed its authenticity and credibility to be the proof that it is the revelation from Allah and that Muhammad is the seal of his prophets and messengers. Allah's protection for him till he delivered his message and spread it despite many attempts of enemies of Islam to kill or hurt him. The Quran was revealed to him at the age of 40 and he died at the age of 63. This estimate indicates that he spread his message for 23 years. That time is equivalent to the duration of the rule of many presidents and emirs, but he was able during that period to uproot the polytheism, worshipping idols and any partner other than Allah. Furthermore, he was sent to instill faith and monotheism in the hearts and found the worship of Allah in a clean way without ascribing a partner to him. Likewise, he uprooted all bad habits from the Arabian Peninsula, so that it will be proof that he supported him in his message. The summary of the condition of the praised Prophet Muhammad was that he was always thoughtful, silent and did not speak except if it is needed. He did never get angry for himself, it was only when someone violated Allah commands. Most of his laughing was smiling. He joked with his companions and played with them, but he did not say except what is right. Here is a summary of some of the physical qualities of the Prophet Muhammad. These qualities include, he had flower color, white reddish face. He had a round face like the moon on the night of the full moon. He had moderate black eyes. If you look at him, you will think that there is coal in his eyes due to their natural beauty and not because of adding coal. They are wide with the presence of length in the part of the eye and in his eyelids. This length added beauty to his eyes. His eyebrows are thin in the length without being connected. He had a broad forehead, high nose, and the most beautiful lips, and had a good divergence between the front teeth. When he spoke, people would see as if the light came out from his incisors. If he is happy, his face becomes bright like a piece of the moon. He had black hair that is neither crimp nor long. His neck was clean like silver. He had a black beard with small white hair after being old. He had a moderate body, neither fat nor slim. He was neither tall nor short, but he is close to tall. Also, he had a straight chest and abdomen. He was patient. He was so handsome to the extent that when people saw his shoulders during Hajj and Umrah pilgrimage and less pilgrimage, they thought they were light due to the beauty of their whiteness. Not only that but the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, also had other good physical qualities. Could such a person who was known to be honest and famous for honesty among people dare lie and be the first to spread it about God? Why did not Muhammad, peace be upon him, be affected by the environment and it has its authority and influence? He lived for complete forty years among people immersed in ignorance, engrossed in error, their immoralities have not passed on to him. And he was not afflicted with them. And he passed through the youth age which it is the time when the chests become filled with hopes and aspirations. So the word hinting with the message or a sign of prophecy did not appear with what he saw or the death of his mother with his young age when he was six years old. 
then the death of his grandfather Abdul Muttalib and his uncle Abu Talib, and with his knowledge of the death of his father while he was a fetus in his mother's womb. All these events that he, peace be upon him, went through do not make him have long hope in that worldly life that he lives. Yet it did not appear from him a word hinting with a message or a sign of prophecy. At the time when the rebellious souls and the angry hopes calmed down, he delivered what Allah commanded him and publicly called people to a message that changed the course of history. He announced that he is the messenger of God and that his message is not limited to the Arabs alone and not only to his generation. But it generally includes all those in his era and all who will come after him. Could Muhammad receive monotheism from a pagan society that boasts with families and lineages? A society dominated by pre Islamic fanaticism, a society that practices evils and exaggerates immorality? Of course, he did not. And he, peace be upon him, was aware since the time of the revelation to him and from the moment of his message that he had to strive long and persevere a lot until God supports him, and certainly, the time of his message will extend until his call and mission spread. And the question that imposes itself, what forced him to declare his prophethood and his message? And if Muhammad was not a messenger from God, then what did he require from this message that brought him colors of torment and persecution? Such as gruesome abusive cursing and severe and terrible punishment? Certainly, he is truly and truthfully the messenger of God, who responds to the command of his Lord, exalted, at the time that God wanted him, according to his will and wisdom. In addition, his enemies have testified that he was a brilliant clever wise man, so what was the purpose he sought and hoped to reach? Was he looking for authority or money? He was offered supreme power and money from his Lord, then from the unbelievers of Quraysh and he chose to be chaste, honest, and ascetic. The polytheists tried to bargain with him by bestowing everything that he might require for him to stop his call, and those poor people, unbelievers, did not know that everything on the earth was equal to a mosquito wing compared to his call. So they were disappointed and could not achieve what they wanted. He had a great interest in helping the poor and caring for the weak, for the sake of these, he forgot himself and his family, and did not give them anything from his life, and spared nothing for them after his death. Also, he left them all to the grace of Allah, the greatest God. He is a prophet who came to lift his followers from being the servants of this world such as the servants of money. He came to make them servants to God alone, to let them be satisfied with a little, enjoyment, of the world, and it is sufficient for them what they prepare for the hereafter. So the messenger of God Muhammad, peace be upon him, was not interested in having authority, money or high standing. Many narrations that were reported from him attest to his abstention from the enjoyment of this, world and his humility throughout his life, so what did he want? Everyone testified to his wisdom and his brilliance, so what was the purpose he was aiming at? He wanted nothing, but to satisfy his Lord who controlled his needs and possessed all his limbs, to win his love and being close to him. Didn't all these indicate that he is sincere in his call and hasty messenger from Allah? How many times had the Almighty Allah support him, peace be upon him, throughout his life and also after his death and why did he do that for him? No doubt that he is a messenger of Allah and the last of all messengers, peace be upon all of them. Likewise, God combined the name of his messenger Muhammad with praise upon him, and it is hard to hear his name without attaching the phrase peace be upon him to his name. It means we beg Allah to bless him. Allah is the one who knows the position and status of his messenger, peace be upon him. Allah's blessing for him is praising for him. Also, it is rare to mention his name without remembering his nickname, before becoming a prophet, which is truthful and trustworthy. The question that imposes itself. How would the Almighty God grant victory and support to Muhammad, peace be upon him, if he was a liar in his claim? The truth is that Muhammad has a high status in the sight of his Almighty Lord and that is why he deserved his support and victory, as he is the seal of the prophets and messengers. Haven't you seen how the highest God supported his messenger and his message? Haven't you seen how God attached his messenger's name to his name in every Adon and Akama, the first and the second calls to a prayer, by the saying of the Muezzin? I bear witness that there is no deity, but Allah, I bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of God and he pronounced his name? Whenever Adon, a call to prayer, ends in a city or country, other people started in another place. That is how that obligatory prayer is performed till another one comes, five prayers in the day and night, and so on. Everywhere after this great religion has spread throughout the world, we hear this true statement and testimony of honesty. I bear witness that there is no God, but Allah. Glory be to the Almighty Allah. Glory be to the Almighty Allah. Glory be to the Almighty Allah. Did you see how God immortalized the name of his messenger Muhammad, peace be upon him, attaching it with his great attributes, honesty and trustworthiness, as dignity for him forever? Allah chose Muhammad, peace be upon him, to be the last of the messengers because his message will be for all people everywhere and at all times. And the Almighty will protect it from distortion and changing, either in addition, increasing, decreasing or other things that previous messages and books have been exposed to through human hands to them according to the whims and desires. I will return again to this question, which I presented before so that the answer to it will be a testimony from non-Muslims. 
Why do we not apply the critical exam that was raised by a Muslim preacher she commented D. To the followers of Christ Jesus, the Son of Mary, peace be upon him, I say. Why do we not apply the decisive test that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, wanted you to apply to anyone claiming prophethood, if he was a true prophet or not? The Bible has stated that Christ, the Son of Mary, peace be upon him, said, by their fruit, you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. Matthew 7 16-20 Why are you afraid of applying this exam to the teachings of the Prophet of God Muhammad, peace be upon him? This crucial test is the acid test that Christ wanted Christianity to apply on every claimant of the prophecy to identify the true prophet that, Christ, hate informed about. The Gospel of Matthew stated that Christ said, Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit, you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. Matthew 7, 15 20. We also find in the Gospel of Matthew, 7 25, that Christ said about who will come after him, you will know him from his products. Will men harvest grapes from thorns, or will they pick figs from thorns? Every good tree produces good fruits, and every malignant tree is known through its products. Matthew 7, 25. If we apply this critical test mentioned above to the Prophet Muhammad, we will find that the Prophet Muhammad, may God bless him and grant him peace, came up with a sound. Pure belief in which there is no slightest excess, negligence, or excess of Christianity and its deification to Christ or the denial of Judaism to him and attributing him to the birth of fornication. We also find that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, came with the righteous law, guiding acts of worship, sublime teachings, calling for all goodness, virtues, and honors of morals, and the command of all righteousness. He is known by virtue, with wisdom and good advice, and forbidding every vice. Also, he corrects bad deeds with wisdom and good advice. We also find that after the advent of the Prophet Muhammad and the people's acceptance of his message and its spread, a great Islamic state with a wide area in various countries all over the world. Based on the unification of the Almighty God, and that stands on justice, the foundations of good and virtue has extended to the north, south, east and west. Especially after the banner of Islam and the pure monotheism have defeated both the empire of the Persians, worshippers of fire which is a creature of God, and the empire of the Romans, worshippers of Christ whom the Almighty created and honored with prophethood and a message like other prophet and messengers, and neither of the two empires ceased to exist any longer. Therefore, the analogy mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew, every good tree makes good fruits and also so. From their fruits you will know them applies only to the Prophet Muhammad who established the state of truth Islam by Allah's favor and he was one that Christ prophesied his coming after him. We point out that if the Prophet Muhammad was not truly a messenger from God, then he and his cause will not thrive. In addition, Allah will degrade him as he did with those who falsely claim prophethood in the message such as Masayla Madu al-Kashab and others, but the case is on the other hand because Allah exalted, supported him, his calls and mission, and then his calls succeeded and produced good and nice fruits. Also, he blessed him to establish the state of truth, Islam, based on monotheism. Allah pleased him by the success of his call and the establishment of this great state, namely, the state of Islam. In the Holy Quran, we find a complete message that complements what Moses and Jesus, peace be upon them, brought. I will use the idea of Bernard Cho who said, if someone like Muhammad, peace be upon him, conducted the ultimate rule of the world, he would be able to address the problems of the world and provide it with peace and happiness because the world desperately needs them, and others. Therefore, it is the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that Christ prophesied his coming after him. Also, for the rational proof of the sincerity of the Prophet Muhammad call and the credibility of his message, some questions were raised to non-Muslims. Let this be the example of the Jews and Christians, as follows. It is said to both Jews and Christians, you did not see your prophets Moses and Jesus, peace be upon them and you did not see their signs, miracles, proofs of their truth and prophethood. How did you know their prophethood and truth and you did not witness their miracles and the proofs of their prophethood? Their response is one of these two answers. The first answer, they may say, our parents told us that. We will ask them, from where did you know their truthfulness and what they told you about? So they will resort to the second answer. The second answer, they may say the fragrancy and testimonies of the reporters of their miracles, signs, and evidence that they brought prove that for us. We will tell them, so you need to believe that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is truly and sincerely the messenger of God because it is known that the transmitters of the miracles of Muhammad, signs, and proofs of his prophecy are many times greater than yours. Also, Allah gathered for his messenger Muhammad two types of miracles, abstract and concrete miracles, so we will tell them. What Allah gave him is more than what he gave other prophets. It was one of the miracles of Moses, peace be upon him, that the sea was separated when Allah instructed him to strike the sea with a stick in his hand. Allah granted the Prophet Muhammad the miracle of the splitting of the moon, that was when he pointed to the moon with the inspiration of God, and it split into two halves. 
it is more wonderful and amazing because it is a heavenly sign. And no one was able to reach the moon at that time and as we mentioned, earlier, that science has recently discovered the so-called cracks of the moon, Rimus or lunar reels, which are long and massive cracks, and pictures of the moon were taken showing one of these long cracks in the middle of the moon, approximately. One of the miracles of Jesus, peace be upon him, was the revival of the dead. Allah gave his prophet Muhammad the miracle of nostalgia of the trunk to him as a sign for him. The trunk cried and moaned to him like a baby. This is more wonderful and astonishing because the life of the tree is more surprising than the resurrection of the dead in which there was life before his death whereas initially the wood has no soul, and other many, many miracles, signs, proofs and scientific miracles that the seal of prophets and messengers Muhammad, peace be upon him, did a signs of the truth of his prophethood and the credibility of his message. In conclusion, 1. No Jew has absolutely believed in the prophethood of Moses, peace be upon him, until he believes in the prophethood of Muhammad, peace be upon him. 2. No Christian has really believed in Jesus, peace be upon him, except after believing in the Prophet Muhammad. Muhammad, peace be upon him, is truly and sincerely the Messenger of God.